Hey guys, Doug B here. This week we're going to take a look at the new additions to Firmware 20 that didn't make it to the beta version. Let's take a look at the release notes and see what's going on. All right, we already talked about the new block mixer algorithm, and we talked about the new speaker drive algorithm, and we talked about the new dynamic distortion block, and we talked about the fixed amp block scene ignore not being recalled correctly in some cases. So let's see what else has been added. Added ability to use pre-delay and reverb block as a simple echo. Pre-delay now features tempo, feedback, and mix parameters. The pre-delay time has also been increased to one second. Several types have been added demonstrating the capabilities. I built a quick preset to try out this new feature. I used quick build from within AxeEdit to throw this together. You know, the in one block, the out one block, then connect them so they're communicating. Then I added the amp block, cab block, and the reverb block. Amp block is using the Friedman BEV2 in channel A. The cab block will use factory two number 727, a 4x12 Fry Fat Cab 414A1VH in channel A. The reverb block will use three channels, A, B, and C and each channel will use one of the new types. As you can see here, A uses echo hall, B uses echo plate, and C uses echo room. We'll use each of these channels in scenes one, two, and three. Fixed USB buffer level setting not sticking between power cycles. Now, I may have experienced this problem a couple weeks ago. I was recording a track with the Axe FX3 connected to my Mac Mini via USB. I used Logic and had recorded part of the guitar track when all of a sudden it went way wonky and the audio from the guitar was almost a second late. It still was correct using the analog outs, which points to a MIDI buffer issue. But what is USB buffer size and how do you adjust it? Well, it's not available via Axe Edit. You can only get to it via the front panel. Here's what the wiki has to say about USB buffer size. Set this to lower values for less latency with USB audio. Set to higher values if you are experiencing distorted audio. Stop USB audio streaming when changing this value as to allow the buffer to reset properly. Streaming can be stopped by closing the application sending data to the Axe FX3 or by disconnecting the USB cable. The USB buffer size determines the number of samples and thereby the latency between the Axe FX3 and the USB host. Lower settings result in better latency for recording and playback, but smaller sizes may not work well with all hosts. A good rule of thumb is to set the buffer to the smallest possible size, increasing if you encounter any USB audio performance issues. You can find USB buffer size in the digital I.O. configuration setup of Setup, then I.O., then Audio. Now you can view the buffer in Setup, Utilities, USB. This page meters the USB input and output first in first out buffers. Ideally, these will be at around 
If the buffer overflows or underflows, USB buffer size should be increased. Remember that you need to quit all audio applications or remove and reconnect the USB cable to reset the buffer. Okay, let's go to the front panel and press setup. Then we go down to I.O., hit enter, page over to audio, then scroll down to USB buffer size. Mine had been set to 256, but now I'm gonna set it to 16. So now we'll exit out, exit out again, and now we'll turn this off. Let it sit for a few seconds, and then we'll turn it on. Okay, let's check it again. Setup. I.O. Page over to audio. Go down to USB buffer size. And it's still 16. So it's working. Now let's exit out. Go to setup utilities. And go over page over to USB. You can see that the buffer is right in the middle. Right where it's supposed to be. Right at 50%. Perfect. Layout link configured on a tap function for a foot switch will no longer incorrectly execute when activating the switch exits the tuner. Now, what I think that means in English <laughs> is that if you are in the tuner and you go out of the tuner into another uh, foot switch that has a layout link before it would not do the layout link correctly. Now it does it correctly. Now let's click on FC Edit and let's take a look at my presets layout here. See, I have tuner set up as the hold function on button number three. And if we look at my layout links, like say for instance here, let's go to layout link number one. It goes to layout two. See, that's layout one, switch one, goes to layout two, which is scenes. So what that means is when I press this button, this preset button, not only will it go to that preset, it also goes to the scenes layout. So each of my foot switches is set up that way. See, layouts one, switch two, layout one, switch four, and layout one, switch five. Those four are the presets select. The two on the end are the bank up and the bank down. So these all have layout links that as soon as you hit that preset button, it brings you into the scenes layout. Okay, let's go to my presets layout on my FC6. And I'll do a hold on the third foot switch. That brings up the tuner. Now let's switch to another preset. Yep, worked exactly as expected. Nice. And under the various other fixes and improvements category, we have the speaker breakup parameter. Forum members found it on the same day that the firmware was released. We can find the new speaker breakup parameter by clicking on the amp block and then going to the speaker tab. You'll find it under the lower right side of the graph right next to cab resonance. It has three values, hard, medium, and soft. Default is medium. Hard is like a brand new speaker. Medium is like a fairly newish speaker that's been broken in. And soft is like that 30 year old cabinet you've been using while playing the never ending clubs and bars tour. Now one thing to be aware of, even though it defaults to medium in current presets, it defaults to soft if you have a global amp block set up. So check your global amp blocks and if you know, if you want to use soft, that's cool. I think soft sounds great, but default is medium. Now I added three more scenes to this preset, hard, medium, and soft. Now you can see that by going to the amp block. See, we got hard, medium, and soft. Using three channels of the amp block, they're all using the Friedman BEV2 with the same settings. The only setting that changes is the speaker breakup. So for that, we're using scenes four, five, and six. Let's see how it sounds.
So there you have it guys, my walkthrough of Firmware 20, the production version. Now some folks are still reporting a few problems with it, so I'm guessing that there's going to be another firmware release coming out here real soon. Now this Saturday is the one year anniversary of this channel, and I am going to film my wife reaching into the hat and pulling out the name of one of the people who sent in suggestions on how to make improvements to this channel. And if your name is chosen, you will get this slick SL59 double cutaway P90 guitar with this strap and a tweed case. Now, unfortunately, I do have to limit it to the lower 48 continental United States because shipping is just going to be prohibitive even just for that. But if your name is chosen and you do live in the lower 48, I will ship this guitar, the strap, and the case to you absolutely free. Keep an eye out for that video. I will post it either Saturday or Sunday at the absolute latest. Next Wednesday will be part one of my look at Austin Buddy's 1400 plus Naked Amps Tone Pack Bank B. Now, you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, we'll see you next Wednesday.